At WWDC last year, there was a talk, Protocol-Oriented Programming in Swift, the crusty talk. If you have not seen this talk, this is the best Swift talk ever. You, you have to see this. In fact, I've been going to WWDC a lot, and I'd say it is the best WWDC talk I ever saw. Swift, the point of the talk, Krusty's point, was that, that uh, Swift is a protocol-oriented programming language, and that this is in distinction to classes and inheritance. And the classes and inheritance create a whole lot of needless complexity. That the right solution is really protocols, very often. So Apple even says, Swift is the first protocol-oriented programming language. Now, I take some exception to that. I actually think I'm also a Go programmer, and I would say that Go actually is a more protocol-oriented language than Swift is today. But that's a debate for later over beer. For now, I think we can all agree Swift wants to be protocol-oriented, and it is protocol-oriented, and that's a great thing. So what Krusty said is that we've let classes and these giant class hierarchies cloud our minds about data. We're trying to create this huge hierarchy to explain everything and create this giant world of animals when all we really wanted was something that can eat. So what we should do is rather than worry about what inherits from what, we should focus on what things can do. Rather than inherit, we can compose. And this takes us back to the deep magic of the dawn of OOP, right? Object-oriented programming was originally about objects not classes. That's why object is right there in the name. Objects and their interfaces. So we're relearning the lessons that small talk taught us in the 70s. But we still get into these nasty jams with protocols, particularly when you have associated types. If you want different kinds of animals to eat different kinds of food, then we can get kind of some weird surprising errors that you may have run into. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the deeper magic from before the dawn of OOP. And we're going to go back and learn the lessons from the 1950s and Lisp. And yes, that means we're going to talk about functions. This, however, is not a functional programming talk. Swift is not a functional language. It's protocol-oriented. So we're going to talk about protocols and how functions can help them. So let's make this a little more concrete. Let's get some code. OK, so we have animals. And they can eat different kinds of food. Now, hey, let's make an array of them, right? Grass-eating animals. This should be really, really easy. Who's seen this error? This is, the, yeah. this is the most annoying error. I find this on Stack Overflow constantly. People go, why does it do this? Well, there's nothing you can do about this directly. You're kind of stuck. There's no special syntax. You can't put angle brackets in or where clauses, nothing. The trouble is that it has an associated type. So what are you going to do? Well, well, how do we fix it? We do something that we call a type eraser. And we take a struct and wrap the protocol in it. So what's that going to look like? So you take a specific animal, and we encapsulate it. And we call, when I call the eat method on any animal, then it's going to just forward to the eat method of cow. OK, great. It means the caller doesn't have to know anything about cows. They can just know you're an animal, any animal. How do you actually build it, though? This kind of syntax. We're going to create what's called a function property. And we can put that in a struct. Now, what's important about this line of code that confuses people all the time, this does not say that the variable eat has the result of calling the eat function. This says that the variable eat is cow's eat function. It actually is encapsulating that entire method. And now I can actually call it. And when I call it, it will forward it on to the cow. It has captured it exactly like a closure does. They're just functions. So OK, how do we really build this? This is what it looks like. It's a little, it's a little complex, but let's walk, walk through it. We have this init, and the, what, what we're going to do is we're going to pass something in. Any animal can get passed in, and we're going to extract what, just the function that implements the protocol functions. And we're going to stick them in variables, and then we're going to implement animal ourselves, and then we're going to forward all those messages to the underlying 
version. And that lets us now, now we can stick them in arrays and everything's happy. You can pretty much do this with almost any protocol and it's incredibly mechanical. The type alias becomes the type parameter. The function becomes a function property. And Swift, we have this little trouble that Swift won't let you use a function property to conform to a protocol that has a function. It's a little unfortunate. It means they have to have this little underscore variable. It's a little ugly, but, that, but it's still very mechanical. It's so mechanical you could imagine that the uh, compiler might do it for you. I hope it does someday. But it's so mechanical that maybe it's telling us something much deeper. Maybe this protocol and this generic struct are just two versions of the same thing. In fact, we might be able to replace one with the other entirely, rather than just wrap it. So instead of ha we, I've gotten rid of the animal protocol entirely over here. If you, now in this case, now I'm no longer passing a thing that implements animal, I just pass the eat method itself. Here is the function, please take it. And it's really the same thing. I can pass you an object that promises a function or I could just pass you the function. That's an interesting idea. So we have these two ideas. One is passing an object that promises a thing or the thing. And we've seen this before. Delegates and handlers. So, and co like, especially completion handlers. So Coco sometimes even has these in the exact same object, because sometimes it's just convenient. Sometimes what you want is a delegate that you're gonna make calls on, but sometimes you just, it's a lot easier just to pass the silly function. So which one's better? Depends. There's some rules of thumb that we've kind of learned over the years as Coco programmers. One is that if the entire protocol has one method in it, you should think about whether it should just be a function and not worry about a protocol. Also, if it has more than three, or has three or more, then you probably don't want to pass those all as individual parameters. Your APIs get really crazy. So wrap them up somehow, probably. Is it a relationship that's short-lived? Is this just a callback? Am I gonna call this thing one time? That, like a completion handler, often functions seem to work for that. Or is the relationship ongoing? I'm gonna call, these two objects are gonna talk to each other constantly, like a data source. Well, data sources are protocols, delegates. So that, again, that kind of tends to lead us over there rather than using functions. These aren't hard and fast rules, but they kind of give us an idea that we could choose and that there are certain heuristics to figure out what you should do. Okay, so a protocol is really just a promise to implement some functions, and a struct is mostly just a bundle of functions that implement the promise. And we can convert between them pretty mechanically whenever we want to. And we can also pretty much mechanically take a struct, which is a bundle of functions, and break them out into individual generic functions. So sometimes a struct is too much structure and we just want one piece of it. We can pull them out if we want to. Or we have a bunch of functions that all seem to have the exact same where clauses or all the same rules and the same types in their generics. We could wrap them together into a struct and get a lot more convenience. Let's see how this works in a little more real world scenario that happened to me. I was doing a lot of work on kind of NP complete problems like traveling salesmen. Um, and Sudoku and knapsack packing, they're all kind of the same problem. Slight differences on, on a theme. And they have a lot of different algorithms you can use. You can use branch and bound, you can use uh, you know, greedy algorithms and local search algorithms. And I wanted to apply all of these to the, to the various problems. So I was writing the same code over and over again. I was writing parsers over and over again and outputters over and over again. I was like, could I, and they were all almost the same. Couldn't I make this generic? Isn't that what that's all about? So I did, protocols, this is Swift. I made my three protocols. I have a parsing protocol that parses and a searching protocol that takes the problem that came out of the parser and creates a, finds a solution and then an outputter that takes the solution and somehow puts, prints it out and displays it. I can put all of these things together into this and then I took those and I dutifully put them into a, a solver structure and there's a little problem though. I need to make sure that all those types lined up, right? I had the output of one stage had to match the input of the next stage. Well, I can't say that in the protocol. Protocol has no where clauses, I can't do that. So I have to do it here in the struct. 
And I'll tell you, this is ugly. <laughs> this starts to feel like a programming in Java. The biggest problem is that this little where clause started showing up everywhere. Especially because I started to realize I didn't need just one solver, I needed lots of solvers. In fact, because I needed different ways. I needed uh, simple solvers for doing development work, but then I needed huge multi-threaded solvers that would be fast enough to actually solve some of these problems. So you, don't, you want them for different purposes, but I want them all to fit into the same structure. So that's great. I need another protocol. Protocols will always save me, right? So I create a solving protocol. And I tied all my things together. And there I go. And I can even, with extensions, I could, I could add an extension that would you know, create a default implementation. And there's that where clause again. And again, every time I wanted to use something, I saw this where clause pop up. And this is just, you see how ugly this starts to get? This is just two pieces. I mean, there's, I just have three types. Imagine if I had tried to wrap this into another protocol. That where clause starts to overwhelm you. OK. So, and when I actually built real structs that implemented solving, they looked like this, and I had to say the where clause again. And this is way too much stuff. So, and I had to do it over and over again. That was making me grumpy, just like Krusty. So, what do I need to do? I need to get rid of the unneeded complexity. That's what Krusty was really telling us, right? It was, yes, it was about protocols, but it was also about just unneeded complexity. We have too many layers, too many protocols. I turned all of my functions into, I took all of these protocols and I said, they're all one method protocols. Could I just roll them up? And I did. And I wind up with this. And this is a whole lot nicer. And I automatically am getting all my types have to match because all the functions are defined right here. So I don't have this problem of getting all of, I don't need a where clause. There's no where clause here at all. I don't need, when I suddenly realized is I don't need a parser. I need a way to parse. I don't need a searcher. I need a way to search. And a way to is just a function. But I still kind of had a problem with this. All of my real solvers started to look like this. Because, as I told you, I can't, you can't use a function property to a protocol. And so I had to create all of my little underscore variables. And again, this gets really, this is kind of very heavy. Because all of my structures were generic. Well, that offered one of the solutions that I could take. And my solution was, well, just use function properties. And this is actually a pretty good solution to the whole problem. This, instead of using functions, I said, let's just have a function property, admit that all of my structures are generic, they're all basically type erasers, and I actually like this solution. It works on problem and solution, rather than on, I don't need all of these uh, type aliases. But the thing is, I could go actually a bit further, because I was still getting a lot of duplicated code. All, all the code you saw there, the little pars, search, and output, those were all duplicated. Encapsulate what varies. We should go back to what our actual problem was. So the problem was I had all of these different solvers. And they all implemented a protocol. And they all take a parser and a searcher and an outputter. And then on top of that, they have various specialized functions. But they all shared those three, those three things. The thing is, we're treating protocols here as though they were classes, really. We're treating it like inheritance. And I was starting to cre recreate the inheritance problems. I said, well, wait a minute. Could I use composition rather than inheritance? Instead of conforming to a protocol that, provides three, that requires three functions, I said, why don't I accept a struct that gives me three functions? There's no protocols here at all. If I add this, it also means that if you expanded your protocol, like I wanted to add a progress reporter to my protocol, I would have to go to everybody who implements that protocol and, and update them to handle that. Here, I could add it into my solver config struct, and, no and people who ignore it, ignore it. So I like that. So this is what that code would look like. There's no protocols at all. So we've gone from a four protocol solution, to a one protocol solution, to a no protocol solution. With four protocol solution, I had lots of types. Things were pretty complicated. And a lot of those types just wrapped one function. When I got all the way down, and the other big problem was that it 
parameterized on the actual things, the implementations. It was parameterized on searchers and parsers and outputters. Now though, in these solutions, I have far fewer types. I just have my one struct, or two structs in this case, and the other one I just had the one protocol. And I parameterize on the problem and the solution, which are data, they're model. And that's what you want to be seeing. You want to parameterize on your data types, not on your handler types. So this took us from all of this code on one side to a much shorter piece of code. Where does it get us? I went from all of these protocols to no protocols. Again, am I saying that protocols are bad? No, I love protocols. Protocols are great, but you should be thinking carefully how you use them, when you use them, and when, when you should just pass a function. And you should replace a pro protocol sometimes with a generic struct, and it might work better. It's pretty easy to move between them. So it's not as easy as I like, but you can try out different things while you're getting started in the early times of your programming. So try refactoring your code early on when you start running into these weird errors that are very hard to get rid of. Maybe if I made this typewriter store, maybe if I made this just functions, would it work better? Try it. Encapsulate what varies. And parameterize on your data, not on your handlers. I think that would make Krusty proud, with or without protocols. 